Hi guys, it is just another blah, yuck, midwinter day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. That would be Sunday, January 17th, <clears throat> 2021, and I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles, and uh, so I guess while we all sit around waiting to see if civil war is going to break out <clears throat> all over this country on Martin Luther King weekend, you know, I, I, all of this talk about civil war, uh, uh, the timing of civil war breaking out on MLK weekend, uh, the irony has not escaped me, but while all eyes are focused on that distraction, uh, to the distraction, we're going to check in with my colleague here in the Doomosphere, <clears throat> Robert Hunziker. Robert Hunziker. I have inter had the pleasure of interviewing Robert at least twice uh, before. Uh, you can find those interviews somewhere on this channel. And, you know, he has a regular column and counterpunch and I don't know if this was his opening salvo it's actually from January 12th I've just uh, been distracted by other things myself so I'm just now getting ready to read uh, <clears throat> how Robert Hunziker <clears throat> is uh, viewing the uh, <laughs> the trudge, the slog into 2021. <clears throat> are we trudging or are we slogging, Robert? Take it away. An exhausted planet limps into 2021. There you go. I think Robert has, the old wordsmith, has hit the, uh, the correct word. An exhausted planet limps into 2021. So what is the state of the planet according to environmental journalist Robert Hunziker? <clears throat> Take it away, Robert. I'm going to put the link on here, guys. You can read this yourself, but since I have nothing else to do with my day or my life other than to sit here and read it for you, I'll be glad to do this. But you can find the link on here, which has a bunch of other links in it. Okay. Early this new year, meaning early uh, in 2021, the Alliance of World Scientists, 13,700 strong, delivered a biting report, not mincing words. Quote, scientists now find that catastrophic climate change could render a significant portion of the Earth uninhabitable consequent to continued high emissions, self-reinforcing climate feedback loops, and looming tipping points. That was from Scientific American. The mission, quote, we scientists have a moral obligation to clearly warn humanity of any catastrophic threat. You're going to see more and more uh, as the 21st century uh, unrolls about the moral obligation of scientists. <clears throat> Even though it is very difficult to, uh, to accept a cartoonish statement that we are destroying Earth, get accustomed to it, because... It is happening, but not right before our eyes or under our collective noses. To better understand the carnage, study the science and discover collapsing ecosystems within a chaotically threatened climate system, especially where nobody lives. That's where it starts and most prominently stands out in full living color for all to see in the Arctic, Antarctica, Greenland, Australia, Siberia, the world's rainforest, and within the vast expanse of the oceans. 
almost nobody lives in those ecosystems. What's next? Nascent efforts to stem the impact of a bruised climate system are underway. Increasingly, all across the land, a serious climate emergency is being recognized for what it is. In fact, over the past two years, 10% of the world's population has declared a climate emergency. And then uh, he uh, goes through, I'm not going to repeat these here, uh, he gives eight examples of different world leaders uh, declaring climate emergency. Yes. Let's get to where the United States, according to Robert, stands in. The United States 10 per the United States 10 percent meantime, under Trump's ironclad directive, the remaining 90% vigorously rejects any consideration whatsoever of climate change. There you go. We have some, uh, some snowbirds, some fellow snowbirds checking out the scene here in this undisclosed swap. Yes, uh, moving along. All right, from climate emergencies in sharp contrast to the in sharp contrast to the posturing of the United States pre-January twentieth, the Alliance of World Scientists is not pulling any punches about the challenge ahead. This is quoting the Alliance of World Scientists from Scientific American, quote, the climate emergency has arrived and is accelerating more rapidly than most scientists anticipated, and many of them are deeply concerned. The adverse effects of climate change are much more severe than expected and now threaten both the biosphere and humanity, close quote. Those are heavy words threatening both the biosphere and, humi and humanity, meaning, you know, going back to what was said earlier, scientists now find that catastrophic climate change could render a significant portion of the earth un inhabitable. And uh, then he quotes from an article uh, from the New Scientist, quote, global warming has already made parts of the world hotter than the human body can withstand decades earlier than climate models expected. Measurements at Jacobabad in Pakistan and some other places I cannot pronounce in the UAE have both repeatedly spent at least one or two hours over a deadly threshold, close quote. As it happens, excessive heat combined with excessive humidity leads to death within six hours. Early signs of this are already appearing decades ahead of expectations. After all, the human body has limits. If the temperature humidity index is extreme enough, even a healthy person seated in the shade with plentiful water to drink will suffer severely or likely die. It is the wet bulb temperature Generally speaking, a threshold is reached when air temperatures climb above 35 degrees Celsius, known as 95 degrees Fahrenheit, combined with humidity above 90 percent. 
which pretty much sounds like Atlanta, Georgia, where I grew up, uh, you know, in the 1960s, was pretty much raised in wet bulb temperatures, as I recall. Anyway, <clears throat> according to scientists, in order to stem the onset of wet bulb temperature peril, there is a new uh, term for the glossary for the end times, wet bulb temperature peril. All right, to stem the onset of wet bulb temperature peril, CO2 emissions must be sharply reduced quickly, especially in consideration of the disquieting fact that all five of the hottest years on record have occurred since 2015. And then I think it was right after this article came out in Counterpunch, I think it was the next day that uh, announced 2020 and 2016 pretty much in a dead heat, as it were, for the hottest year ever recorded. The big difference being that 2016 was an El Nino year, while 2020 was a La Nina year, and that you can expect El Nino to push temperatures up as they did in 2016, but you apparently can no longer expect La Nina to bring temperatures down. So what the two hottest years on record were, a, were an El Nino and a La Nina year. So everyone's, now we can sit around and wait for the next El Nino year to come along. It won't be far away. All right, but getting back to Robert. <clears throat> Meantime, the main culprit, CO2, the key driver of global heat, recently reached an all-time record high for the Holocene epoch, which represents 11,700 years of stable climate behavior. The Great Goldilocks Sleep Walkthrough Time Era. That is, until excessive levels of CO2 started cranking up global warming post-1750. The Alliance of World Scientists article declares 2020 as one of the hottest years on record. You know, this is before the, the final tally was reached. And it prompted massive, extraordinary wildfire activity all across the planet. Siberia, the western U.S., the Amazon, and Australia. These unprecedented disruptions are indicative of a malfunctioning climate system. Clearly, the planet is sick. There you go. That is uh, Robert Hunziker summing up the state of the planet in 2021. Clearly, the planet is sick. According to the Alliance, quote, Every effort must be made to reduce emissions and increase removals of atmospheric carbon, close quote. So, you know, echoing the uh, UN IPCC that all of these uh, future scenarios uh, are based on the assumption that we will start sucking CO2 out of the air, a, a fact lost on most people. Uh, along the way, several countries have committed to zero net carbon emissions by 2050 to 60. However, there is mounting evidence that those goals are inadequate. Hmm. Rather, new evidence suggests net zero carbon must be achieved by 2030, not 20 to 30 years later. That is far too late. In order 
To achieve something beyond a mere semblance of climate system balance, if that is even possible, it will be necessary to adhere to the goals of the Bond Challenge Global Restoration Initiative of 2011, restoring 350 million hectares, which is about uh, almost a billion acres of forest and lands by 2030. 74 countries have endorsed this nature-based solution. Yes, that we are going to restore uh, close to 1 billion acres of forest uh, in the next nine years. Uh-huh. Yes. The Alliance of World Scientists does offer solutions to this dilemma. Yes, they do. We have solutions to the dilemma. Here are the solutions to the dilemma, although there are no solutions to the predicament. Uh, so I don't know if Robert's going to talk about that or not, but let's hear the solutions to the dilemma. Wow. Number one, Get off fossil fuels. The top priority, never going to happen. Number two, stop industrial emissions like methane, black carbon, and similar emissions in order to dramatically reduce the rate of warming. Okay, even if we were to stop industrial emissions of methane, uh, the methane bomb has already been set off in the permafrost feedback loop. Robert Hunziker knows this. Uh, I just don't know. He, he's just... I, 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 I'm assuming... I, I don't want to speak for Robert. Maybe we need to bring him on the show. I, I don't want to speak for Robert, but again, because he is reporting what you know, these concerned scientists are claiming are solutions. I don't think he is insinuating that he agrees with them on this point uh, or the reality of it happening. But again, I would need to ask Robert himself, and if I get him back on the show, we will. All right, number three. Restore natural ecosystems, especially farming, and of special note, quote, the logging of the Amazon, tropical forests in Southeast Asia, and other rainforest, including the proposed cutting in the Tongass National Forest of Alaska, is especially devastating for the climate. And uh, as we know, that logging uh, in the Amazon, in Southeast Asia, in Africa, and in the Tongass uh, right here in the U.S. are all going to ratchet up. I know it. Robert Hunziker knows it. Everyone who wrote the solution knows damn well that, uh, that this is verbal masturbation. It is not going to happen. Okay. Reduce beef and meat products to help reduce methane emissions. Oh, yeah. Number five, transition to a carbon-free economy that reflects our dependence upon the health of the biosphere affectionately referred to as Mother Earth, adopt eco-economics as a healthy replacement for the neoliberal brand of forever growth capitalism cruising along on a golden paved road to never-never land of fantasy and ecstasy is not going to happen. All right, and finally, bringing up the rear, although, of course, it should be number one on the list, uh, above 
stopping fossil fuels, bringing up the bottom of, according to this, this these 13,000 scientists, today's human population growth of 200,000 per day, I've heard it's closer to, it's around 240,000 uh, newborn babies per day needs to stabilize and decline via support for education of young women throughout the world. There is one way to reduce the use of fossil fuels, that's to reduce the number of fossil fuel users. Okay, but we're going to wrap it up here. We're going to wrap up uh, Robert Hunziker's State of the Planet here. Accordingly, the Alliance proclaims, quote, in December 2020, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres pleaded for every nation to declare a climate emergency. Thus, we call for the U.S. government to proclaim a climate emergency. With either Joe Biden declaring a national climate emergency through an executive order or Congress passing climate mitigation funding and a declaration of a climate emergency that has been buried in a congressional committee throughout 2020. One year ago, we were troubled about poor progress. We were troubled about poor progress on mitigating climate change. We are now alarmed by the failure of sufficient progress during 2020, close quote. Yes, all these alarmed scientists, uh, I think they, they should be, or they called the, I've already forgotten, the Alliance of Alarmed Scientists or the Alliance of Concerned, just the Alliance of World Scientists, I guess they need to change their name to the Alliance of Alarmed Scientist. The Alliance of Alarmed Scientist. But anyway, I've got to wrap up uh, today's chronicle of the collapse because the sun is actually breaking through the clouds here in the middle of winter in the Sunshine State. And uh, the little dog and I need to go on a walk through the park on a Sunday. We're going to take a Sunday walk through the park while we still can. And I suggest you better get out there right now and uh, take a Sunday walk in the park while you still can before civil war is declared before the climate emergency. Bye, guys.